Hey guys, Gameboy3800 here once again, and today, taking a look at the gigantic Fujitsu Lifebook N6010. This is a 17-inch Pentium 4-based laptop, and it is quite the specimen. I have not had one of these yet, this is the first time I've gotten a look at a big old Fujitsu, and I must say they're quite impressive. Taking a look at the ports, got some USBs and cooling on the back. DVD and the USB on the right. The front has the speakers. And give it a second to load to the left. And here we see we actually have video in ports. It's got a built in TV tuner, a PC card, SD card, USB, and Firewire, as well as audio ports and a lock port. So this is a massive machine. I've not really had the chance to hold one of these machines before. And it's, it's like awe-inspiring how big this machine actually is. And the screen itself is awesome, too. It's hard to believe, but this is one of the best screens from the time. The speakers uh, are aged. They are, like, partially blown, <laughs> I think. They don't sound good anymore, but I believe, like, if I were to fit new speakers in this, it would sound good, and you may have seen it there that it was flashing a red light on the front LED thing. That's to show that the battery uh, needed charging. And that's pretty cool, I didn't, didn't know it could do that. Moving on with the lid open. Here we can see that the keyboard has yellowed over the years. It's supposed to be the same weight as the chassis. I don't know why only the keyboard uh, has yellowed, but not the rest of it. Uh, but here we can see how big the screen actually is. And we can see the touchpad. It's running in the good spot, in, in the right spot, but it's not too big. We could definitely make it bigger by making those buttons smaller, I think. And it's so big you can't even see the like Lifebook logo on the lid in frame. At the top, we get audio and media controls, as well as our power button. And the top of the screen has a button that you press, and that releases the latch. Taking a closer look at the keyboard and the bottom of the unit, uh, we can see how the keyboard has yellowed over the years. You can see the stickers. It's actually got an ATI Radeon. And this is a Pentium 4 538, I want to say. So it's a 3.2 gigahertz chip on the 478 socket. And the DVD drive is just a random drive I had. Uh, when I got this, it uh, didn't have a cover. And here we can see the two massive fans and the subwoofer on the bottom. Subwoofer works great, but the others, the front speakers, are blown. At least the left one is. Here we can see we have a channel tuner as well as a volume tuner and all the media and play buttons for like playing DVDs and such. And there's a full size keyboard. Keyboard is pretty good despite the yellowing and lots of wear on it. You can see you can see the shine of the reflection from it being very well used. And you can also see here if you look at the top of the screen. Uh, there's, it's actually got a built-in uh, laptop lifter, like a built-in cooling lifter. It is only plastic, and I suspect a lot of these will have had uh, broken those. So this one, still having it uh, attached and not broken off, because of how flimsy it is, I think it, it does make this unit rare. And that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing with this machine is that it is pretty used. The fans, one of them has got a bad bearing, so when it turns on, it is very loud. But it works, it keeps the machine cool enough. Powering it on, you can see the Fujitsu logo pop up for a second. And we will boot into Windows XP. I put in a 30 or 40 gig hard drive that is very clicky. I think I will retire it after this video. But I loaded Windows XP Service Pack 2 onto it. 
and it does take a while to boot up. Here we are starting a Cinebench run. Uh, you can probably see the score that we got before. It is pretty fast. It's a 3.2 gigahertz chip. Socket 478, so that's almost the best you can get for this socket. The best you could get is a 3.4. And I'm not sure if this is a 3.2 Prescott or 3.2 Northwood. Uh, I would need to load up CPU-Z to find that out. Uh, but I did clean it out because it was pretty dusty when I got it. So it's running as cool as it can be even with the damaged uh, fan. And it posted a good score. Let's go ahead, shut this down, and get into the benchmarks. And here's the benchmarks, and here we can see at the bottom, the Fujitsu takes the crown so far. It has the best score of any Pentium 4 machine we've taken a look at so far. And that is despite having a slower processor than the IBM G41 that we took a look at last week. So that tells me that there is something wrong with the board or the power delivery of the IBM G41. For it to get a score of only, what is that, 0.44, with this one getting a score of 0.53, clearly this one with the slower quote-unquote processor is more equipped, better able to handle the power of the Pentium 4, and it takes the crown. So it's kind of expected, especially for the size of the machine, you expect it to be able to better handle the heat and the power of it. So I guess it makes sense. Of these machines I've taken a look at so far, I would probably want to use the Fujitsu more often, or like over all these machines, because of that power and because of the fairly good speakers. The speakers are good. And navigating it, it is a good machine to use. And the battery actually does hold a charge. I haven't tested how long, but it, the fact that it does is pretty good. I also don't know how rare it is, so it's probably a good thing to hold on to. Anyways, that'll be it for now. We have a new chart topper. Next week, we will look at a Sony Pentium 4 machine. It'll be quite interesting because it will be the same age as the Dell 250N. Which one will come out on top? Take your bets. We'll see you in the future.